जय राधा माधव कुंजा विहारी जय राधा माधव कुंजा विहारी Kopi Janna Balaba Kirivana Dari Kopi Janna Balaba Kirivana Dari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Gopi Janna Valaba Girivana Dari Gopi Janna Valaba Girivana Dari Sora Nandana, Buddha Janna Ranjana. Ya Sora Nandana, Buddha Janna Ranjana. Jamuna Tira, Vana Chari. Ramana Dira Vana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Gopi Janna Valaba Kirivana Dari Sora Nandana Burjana Ranjana Sora Nandana Yasura Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vana Chari Tira Jamuna Tira Vana Chari Yamuna Tira Vana Chari Jan Vistapad Panama Hunks of Prabhu Jakacharya Astatas of Shishimad. His divine grace, Sila A.C. Bhaktivinanda Swami, Sila Prabhupada Ki. Anandi Gaudavais Tumani Ki Jai. Namacharya Sila Hurda Stakor Ki Jai. Iskan Founder Acharya Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Prem Sikha Host Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Giradhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vandha Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gaur Gopinath Samakun Radha Kun Giri Govaran Ki Jai Sri Vandavanam Ki Jai Sri Maya Panavidam Ki Jai Ganga Maya Ki Jai Jamuna Maya Ki Jai Tulsa Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Sonveda Bhakti Vandha Ki Jai 
چند سن بکتشت ویشن کی جا هوری نام سن کتان کی جا کاو پیمانان دی آو گروی سمدورتیز 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 شیشی گرو ان شی گرو رنگا Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this morning we read in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 28, Text Number 59. Tasmins Twang Ramaya Svisto Ramamano Shuta Smriti Tat Sangad Idrisim Prapto Dashang Pāpī yasīm Prabhu Taz means from Ramayās Pristo Ramamāno Shutat Smṛtihi Tat Sankhād Idrisīm Prāpto Dasāng Pāpī yasīm Prabhu Taz means from Ramaya Prishto Ramamano Sutasmatihi Tatsanghad Eid Simprapto Dasam Havi Nasim's Papo Taz means from Ramaya Prishto Ramamano Sutasmatihi Tatsanghad Idrisim Rapto Dasang Papi Nisim Prabho Tazmin Strong Ramayas Pisto In that situation, Tom, you, Ramaya, with the woman, Spusta, being in contact, Ramamana, enjoying, Asuta Smriti, without remembrance of spiritual existence, Tat, with her, Sangat, by association. Idrisim, like this. Prapta, you have attained. Dasam, a state. Papiyasim, full of sinful activities. Prabhu, my dear friend. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. Sila Hovad Ki. My dear friend. When you enter such a body along with the woman of material desires, you become overly absorbed in sense enjoyment. Because of this, you have forgotten your spiritual life. Due to your material conceptions, you are placed in various miserable conditions. 
purport. When a person becomes materially engrossed, he has no capacity to hear about spiritual existence. Forgetfulness of spiritual existence entangles a man more and more in material existence. Such is the result of sinful life. Various bodies are developed with the material ingredients because of different types of sinful activities. King Paranjana assumed the body of a woman, Vaidarbhi, as a result of his sinful activities. Bhagavad Gita clearly says, Striyos, Vaisas, Tatasu, Dram, such, that such a body is low-born. If one takes shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, however, he can be elevated to the highest perfection, even though he be low-born. One acquires low births, lower births when one's spiritual intelligence is reduced. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnana Jnana Salakaya Chakshun Malitam Dina Tazmai Sri Gurave Nava Okam Kota Vachalang Pangum Langai Tegarim Yat Kripa Taraham Bande Sigarum Dina Tadaram Vachikapachi Vyasya Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Potitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaisnave Vyo Namo Nava Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Here it says that people are overly absorbed in sense enjoyment. So why are people so overly absorbed? in sense enjoyment. I guess because they think they're their senses. <laughs> they think that they're their body. Uh, but actually the reality is we're not our bodies. Have any of you ever heard that before? <laughs> and Krishna says, Evam bude padang budva Knowing oneself to be transcendental to material senses, mind, and intelligence, one should carefully engage in Krishna consciousness and slay this illusory desire to enjoy this material world. Yeah, so this is the... Uh, and it's actually a great step to, to realize that we're not the body. That's a, that's a major step. Even though we've heard it so many times, because we're, we're so conditioned, we've had so many bodies, and we, uh, so many times we've tried to enjoy material senses, so it's to, to get out of that conditioning, very difficult, but possible. <laughs> but possible. We just have to, uh, as it said, give it all we have in order to attain this uh, understanding and that's just the beginning, of course. The goal is to engage in, in loving service to Krishna. For, it's interesting, the last few days, people have been asking me on, on book distribution, so what, what's the goal? I mean, usually people, they don't ask. <laughs> they don't ask me. Just, maybe it's because of the marathon or something. <laughs> the marathon to go make things a little more intense. The goal is two million Bhagavad Gita's. <laughs> No, I tell them the goal is to attain pure love for God. Yeah, this is the this is the highest goal. You know, we're, we're, this is, we're not, we don't belong here. We we belong somewhere else. We belong in the spiritual world with God, engaging in loving service. So uh, yeah, this is the this is the goal. So here it's mentioned that we're born in this world with so many with so many desires. So many desires. How many desires? <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too many material desires. Of course, you can't give up desires, but we can give up these material desires. That's possible. That's possible. Not easy. Not easy, but possible. But one has to be very determined to give up these material desires. Uh, and if we think about it, it's actually, I was speaking to one Christian yesterday, and uh, so I, I mentioned to him, I grew up a Christian, and 
and became a Hare Krishna. And he was curious about, well, how can that, how did that happen? I said, well, I read that, that book in your hand, Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> You know, Bhagavad Gita means the song of God, and the, the 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 words of God are powerful. So I was I was convinced by by the purity and by the logic. And I told him I tried to read the Bible. I I could only get you know page three. I could never get past page three. <laughs> the Old Testament, the New Testament, that was nothing. The New Testament, that was that was nice. You know, Jesus, and that was easy. But the Old Testament, whoo, very difficult. But the Bhagavad Gita is just, is just filled with so much nectar. I told him I read the whole book in seven days. I couldn't put it down. So I, I, I gave it to him, and, he, and hopefully he'll get a good impression and appreciate it. But yeah, the, the words of Krishna are, are, are very powerful and very purifying. And if we hear it again and again, we, we, get, we get purified. Many times Prabhupada instructed uh, disciples that had been having difficulty, read a chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. And that's how this came out with a you know, chapter a day with Vaisheshika Prabhu. So yeah, it's purifying. Hearing the words of Krishna purifies us. So we have to uh, hear again and again and again. As it's said in the Bhagavatam, a long time. We have to hear for a long time. We've been hearing the the words of Maya, the instructions of Maya, the you know, for a long time. So now we have to hear. We got we got to overcome that. We got to get over that. You know, by hearing for a long time about Krishna. And so I was reading recently this. Uh, prayer by Vitrasura. One of the most wonderful prayers, coming from a demon. <laughs> Actually, he was, externally he was a demon, but internally he was a great devotee. And therefore he made this prayer. He said, when will my desire be so intense to serve Krishna directly, just like the, the bird the the little baby birds their their wings haven't grown yet so they're 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 dependent completely on their mother and they're they're anxiously waiting for the mother or father to return you know to feed them anxiously waiting or the calf the calf is anxiously wanting to go and and get the milk of the mother many of you have been in Vrindavan you go to the the Goshal, and you see these calves, it's like amazing, so intense. They want to go to their mothers like anything. It's just like, pshh. If you ever see out, can't boo here. They just, <laughs> I remember I was in, in Sydney Temple one time. We have a farm just north of the Sydney Temple. So they invited me to the farm there, and we, they had some cows there, and and I was I was amazed. There's uh, this this one calf. Now generally the calves are usually about this big, you know, not very big, but this one calf was it was huge and big, <laughs> and it wanted to get the milk of the mother, <laughs> and it was it was crying out loud, you know, and, and the the caretakers of the cows are like, wow, I've never seen her like this before. <laughs> so finally they they let the this huge calf go and she went to her mother and practically knocked her over you know, and she, you know, she just like you know, and every time you, the calf is going like this and the mother's like moving you know, it's like, and she must be thinking boy this is, how long is this you know, keep coming for milk you know? the calf was almost as big as the mother so enthusiastic to get that that milk and then he goes on to say, just like also a, a chaste wife is very anxious for the husband to return. He goes off on a, on a trip. And she's anxiously waiting for the husband to return. So he says, when will that desire be that I, that I anxiously want to serve you, Krishna, directly? So this is something that we could, we could learn how to pray from these great Vaishnavas. Yeah? We should want that. 
to serve Krishna directly, be anxious to serve Krishna. Hmm? So what we're doing in practicing Krishna consciousness is we're trying to build up this desire and 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 completely knock down all these other desires. Just be free of them. Pray to Krishna. You gotta pray to Krishna to be free of these material desires that keep us entangled. It's like in this verse it's mentioned that the living entity becomes entangled. Just like we've all seen spider webs. Right? And sometimes these little insects they get caught in the spider web and they try to escape. But the more they try to escape, the more they get entangled in the in the web. And then the spider comes and I was in uh the New Govardhan farm in Australia, in one of the rooms there, and there was one of these webs. And an insect got caught in this web. And I was, I was thinking, oh man, it's just a question of time before the spider's going to come. And I kind of felt bad about the, you know, the spider's going to come, and what they do is they just, they, they, they stick you, and then they just suck your blood out, you yeah. know. So I, kind of, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> I was walking back and forth chanting. So I, I, I let the insect free. <laughs> I did not do yeah, I mean, the, but the spider has to live also, right? That's how they survive. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to, to, to see that. <laughs> but this is, the, they get entangled. So the living entities, they get entangled. Just like we have the internet, very appropriately called the internet. People get caught in this net, yeah. the web, also you call it the web, get caught in there. I was preaching one time in, in, uh, in Russia, at one temple, and I was saying how even devotees now, they get caught in, this, in, this, in, the, in, in the social media, the Facebook. And I said one lady from another temple, I was speaking about this, she, she spent eight hours a day on the Facebook. And one of the ladies in the crowd said, only eight hours? <laughs> so people get caught in this, in this web. And when, when Prabhupada was here, I think it was in 1972, I think Telex, I think it was Telex, it was like the first thing where they, you know, they had this uh, quick you know, communication. So this is in Los Angeles, and devotees said, Prabhupada, we have this machine called Telex. We could, we could communicate with, with, uh, with New York, and they could respond. So, they, so they said, you want to see Prabhupada? All right, let's see what you have. Okay. <laughs> so they, they sent a letter to, sent a message to New York, and they didn't respond immediately. They sent another one, didn't respond. Then they sent one saying, Srila Prabhupada is standing right here. He wants to see a response. Please respond. And then he got an immediate response. <laughs> Jai Srila Prabhupada, we're looking forward to you coming in two weeks. You know, like <laughs> so, so Prabhupada said, oh, okay, it's interesting. And so the devotee has asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, should we, should we use this in, in ISKCON uh, very much? And Prabhupada said, no, because you'll simply do prajapa. <laughs> And this is what goes on in this, you know, this social media. I mean, I'm sure Prabhupada wouldn't be very happy with this Facebook thing. <laughs> the way he's spending so much time on. Of course, there's there's nice things. There's there's lectures and there's nice Krishna conscious things on there. But one has to be very, very careful. Otherwise, because there's a lot of Maya. Also, there's a lot of distraction there, just taking away from Krishna consciousness. So we're trying to build up our Krishna consciousness. We're trying to become good devotees, good, sincere devotees. So we have to accept things that are favorable. And anything that's unfavorable, what do we do? We reject it. No, not interested. Not interested. Yeah. Because it will uh, be a hindrance to our, to our goal, to attaining love for Krishna. So this process that we're that we're undergoing here, it's 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 kind of like it's medicine. 
Never to tar sour begiyam on us, babosha trota manobi rama. A glorification of the supreme personality of God it is relished by those who are no longer interested in the false temporary illusory pleasures of this world. And this glorification is 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 the medicine which will cure the disease of materialism. And Prabhupada mentions in the purport there to that verse that this is the universal remedy for material life, hearing the glories of Krishna. So uh, we're so fortunate that we we have so many wonderful glories of Krishna. You know, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitam, Rita, Bhagavad Gita, so many so many other texts with the Ramaya and so many Prabhupada has given us a a, a great treasure of nectar. Uh, but this is all this, this it's it's interesting that, that usually medicine is bitter. Right? Usually medicine is bitter, but we have medicine that's just like nectar. It's so nice, you can, and it's and you can hear it again and again and again, and it's so nice. You know, it doesn't get old, as I tell people when I'm distributing. This is timeless wisdom. You read it over and over and over again, and still, you you appreciate it. Yeah. So this is the uh, the Prabhupada says that this bhavasa means the universal remedy for all miseries. Hearing and chanting Krishna's glories. Is the remedy. This is the remedy for the for materialism. It purifies the mind and purifies the heart of all this uh, contamination that we've uh, picked up for God knows how long. So Narutam Das Dakor, he says, anyone who is not engaged in hearing the glories of Krishna is uh, Pashugna means he's taken the poison. He's taken poison. Just like all this, uh, so many, so many books and all this news, all poison. Yeah. Doesn't help us in our advancement of Krishna consciousness. And therefore this verse, Nivrata at the end it says that they're killers of their own soul. By allowing their consciousness to, uh, to experience this, this materialism, they're killing the soul. Of course, you can't kill the soul, but practically speaking, they're, they, they're killing the soul because there's no understanding. There's no understanding of the soul or of God, so they just become lost in this uh, mire of, of nescience. So Prabhupada came to, to give us this, uh, this medicine, this opportunity to hear the glories of Krishna. Now, of course, we, we do these things that are, that are favorable, and we have to reject. He came and taught us, you know, follow the four regular principles. And he was thinking, when he, when he goes to America and, and, and asks the Americans to refrain from these four regular principles, they're going to tell me, Swamiji, go home. <laughs> go back to India. <laughs> so he was, he was pleasantly surprised to see that the youth, that the youth were taking this and, and giving it up. And this was a time when it was, you know, in the, in the 70s, it was just like, it, the sense gratification era had, it was just like, blooming like anything, just free sex, love, you know, all this is, and Prabhupada was surprised to see so much intermingling with the girls and boys. You know, and it was, and he could see there's so much sinful activity. So he was so nice, so happy to hear that they were that they would accept this, follow the regular vigils, and chant sixteen rounds a day. Uh, and he said that if the if the leaders of this country knew what I was going to do, they would have killed me, because now by the by the powerful preaching of Srila Prabhupada. Thousands of people have given up these sinful activities, you know, intoxication, meat eating, and this is just the beginning. This 50 years or so is just the beginning. I mean, <laughs> who knows? People are joining all the time. So who knows what is, you know. So he said they would have killed me 
It's like they killed Jesus Christ. Yeah. He was preaching so purely, he killed him. So Prabhupada was so pure, and the result is there. I, I was speaking to one person, one Indian man, uh, a couple of days ago. And he said, well, there's so many versions of the Bhagavad Gita, but why are you presenting this one? And I said, well, there were so many, but nobody became a devotee of Krishna. I read this Bhagavad Gita, and immediately I understood Krishna's God. And I stopped my sinful activities, and I, follow, I started following the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. Not only thousands of, of Americans, and people all over the world, they gave up their sinful activities and devoted themselves to serving Krishna. That's the power of this Bhagavad Gita. And he said, oh, okay, then I'll have to get one of these. <laughs> so he took a Bhagavad Gita. And therefore, it's Bhagavad Gita as it is. And I told them, scholars throughout the country, they accept this as the most authorized. Because Prabhupada, he lived the teachings. He lived, he walked the talk. You know, so many people, they give their interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita just to try to get their, their name, some recognition. And practically speaking, all the Swamis that came, they were all impersonalists. No devotees of Krishna. Everybody that commented on the Bhagavad Gita, they were devotees of Krishna. <laughs> so Prabhupada was, was not only a devotee of Krishna, he was a great devotee of Krishna, pure devotee of Krishna. So he gave the pure message of Krishna. And therefore, the result is there, that people are coming forward and wanting to, uh, to serve Krishna. So in the purport, uh, Prabhupada mentions that uh, that when a person becomes materially engrossed, he has no capacity to hear about spiritual existence. Uh, they have no capacity to understand because they're so, they're so covered. So, but Srila Prabhupada is so pure that even though someone is so covered, he, 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 he's so logical and he's so pure that people catch the message. Prabhupada's name is Bhakti Vedanta. The Bhakti and the knowledge, Vedanta. He had the logic, the knowledge, and the purity. Bhakti Vedanta. You have those two. That's a great that's a great combination. Yeah. Well, most people they come from India, they have the they have some knowledge. But bhakti, that's hard to find. The Prabhupada was just overflowing with bhakti and knowledge. So therefore, he had the great success that he did. So I thought I'd tell you a, a couple of stories on book distribution that are kind of uh, interesting. Uh, Archita told me this. Archita is one of the BBT managers up in Los Angeles. Oh, he used to be here as well for some years, right? Yeah, yeah. So he said he had this, uh, th this lady called the BBT there, and, and she said she wanted to sponsor the prasadam for all the devotees for the day. And so he talked to her for a while, and, and then he said, well, I'm, I'm curious, why do you want to sponsor the prasadam for the devotees today. She said, well, I'll tell you an amazing thing that happened to me. It's, it's almost unbelievable. But with Krishna, anything could happen. <laughs> she said, when I was seven years old, I died. And some person came and took me, and he flew me around. He flew me around. And then I went back into my body. When I was 50 years old, I met a, a, book, a book distributor. 
And he gave me a book, and he, and he was showing me the book and showing the pictures. And when I saw Krishna, I said, "That's the, he's the one. He's the one that took me around." <laughs> so I bought that book. I told this devotee about this. So I, I bought that book and other whatever other books he had. I bought, and then I got the, the Srimad Bhagavatam. I got the Chaitanya Charitamrita. I got all, everything that Prabhupada has written. I bought, and I just read Prabhupada's books. I want to go back to Krishna. She told Archita. <laughs> Amazing, huh? I mean, amazing karma. I mean, seven-year-old girl. <laughs> amazing. So what if there was no book distributor there that she ran into? She wouldn't have known who that was. Right? So it's so important that we, that we go out, that we distribute books, because amazing things will happen. Yeah. And we don't know. We don't know amaz the amazing things that are happening. Another time there was a, uh, a man, he went to one book table. Devotee had a book table there. And, and he saw the Bhagavad Gita. And, and he asked the devotee, who translated this? And he showed the picture of Prabhupada. And he said, yes, this the Bhagavad Gita I'll take. This man has been coming to me in dreams and telling me to get my Bhagavad Gita, get my Bhagavad Gita. And I got others, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same person. You'd see the picture, no, that's not. But then when you saw Prabhupada, Prabhupada actually came to him. He recognized Prabhupada. <laughs> Another time there was uh, one devotee who was distributing books in, in Holland. And uh, he was going uh, to business businesses, and one person called the police. And he saw the police coming, so he decided to try to avoid the police. So he went. He went. He took his box of books, Bhagavad Gita, and he's running. And it's kind of a populated area, so he he was able to get away. And he he goes down one one alley and he gets to the end and there's there, there's 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 one door there he's thinking oh I hope it's open <laughs> so he, he opens the door and he goes down this corridor and he's going down this corridor and, and then he goes to the end and there's and he's on he ends up and he's on a stage <laughs> and a person says oh here he is he's here just in time he's got the prizes okay give out the prizes to everyone he's, he's like so <laughs> he reaches down, he gives out Bhagavad Gita to everybody. And he says, oh, thank you, you're here just in time, you know, thank you so much. And, and, then, uh, and then he says, well, how much do I owe you? And he put a good price on the books, you know. And, and then it turns out that it, it, it was a butcher's meeting. True story. Yeah. <laughs> kind of amazing. Krishna makes all these amazing, these amazing arrangements, yeah. So, yeah, book distribution is a real... Adventure. I mean, you can imagine how pleasantly surprised he must have been. <laughs> There's devotee. All those books, gone, like, you know, three minutes. Yeah. So, today is the last day of the marathon. Oh. <laughs> it's a wonderful marathon. I, I, because I usually go traveling at this time. Because I, I would give seminars in, in Australia and New Zealand and place like that. So I'm usually, I'm never here at this time. So I, I haven't, yeah, yeah. So I haven't, I haven't done the marathon for about 20 years. So this is probably the best month I've had in about 20 years. <laughs> so, so this is another blessing of the COVID. I was able to really concentrate on, on distributing Prabhupada's books. It's so nice, yeah. and San Diego is a great place for book. To so many places to distribute books here. This is like this is like heaven for a book distributor. Yeah. <laughs> and still, there's other places that we that we haven't, they're not even aware of. 
So, yeah. Krishna's mercy. I think we had a pretty good marathon. So, any questions or comments? Yes. Rajendranandana Prabhu. Sadhu, sadhu. Thank you so much. One little, it's the tiniest detail, but it's actually very significant. We wouldn't say incredible karma on the part of the seven-year-old. That's divine mercy interceding <laughs> divine with her karma. <laughs> yes. That's amazing, huh? And she's just, she just, she's just absorbed in Krishna. I, I just want to go back to that person again. That's like, It sounds like Prikshit Maharaj, when he saw Krishna in the womb, he never forgot Krishna. He was always looking for Krishna. Yeah. Krishna, Krishna. What does Prikshit mean? It means uh, examiner. He's always examining. Where is that person? Amazing, huh? Are there so many examples that Srila Prabhupada would come to people who weren't ISKCON devotees in their dreams? And, and that weren't ISKCON devotees? And, and he would, you know, give them instruction, and in time that instruction would, would blossom where they would have association with devotees and appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. He has a, a Prabhupada, he, uh, he could see. It's like that amazing story of this... Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it here, but this this devotee family, uh, African American, they were uh, I think they were in the in the East Coast, and and this lady, the mother, she got a BTG, and from reading the beat, she was studying a lot of different religions, you know, the Mormonism and the Catholic, and and and, and just looking into all kinds of things, but she, when she she read the BTG, she was convinced. This is the path, and this is my guru, Prabhupada. So she went to the. She, she changed all all the her children's names to devotee names, and she shaved her, her son's head, and he did the whole, the whole thing, you know. Just and the temple president there, she he says he thought you, you can't do all that. You, know, you just can't do things like that, you know. So she, he wouldn't allow her to the temple. He wouldn't allow any of them to the temple. They they just avoid this. So she thought, well, I gotta go, we gotta go to another temple. So they just went and got in their station wagon and got there. You know, she had about five or six kids. And they just went looking for another temple. And they ended up in Dallas. And she explained the thing to the, to the temple president. And, and Prabhupada happened to be coming the next day. And she's like, hoo hoo, <laughs> so lucky. But, but he, oh, this temple president there was also a little like, this is a very unusual, you know, for the, you know, she's just a bhaktin, she's cha- you know, shaved up her kids, changed their names, and a little, little, little too enthusiastic, so he was also a little reluctant to, to, um, to allow them to come into the community. So the temple president, ex- when Prabhupada came, they say, explained the situation about this lady. And Prabhupada, Prabhupada was so pleased with this lady. He could he could see that the, the devotion in this lady. He didn't question it at all. He gave initiation on that visit on that visit to her and one of her daughter his, her daughters. And uh, they did so much service. One of them just left her body recently. You, what was her name? Rin- I believe it's Krishna Nandini. Krishna Nandini. Yeah, Krishna Nandini. She did so much service. Prabhupada saw that. No one else could see it, but Prabhupada saw it. When you, when you see the spark, you, you fan it. So Prabhupada fanned that spark, and the whole family became devotees. You know, so this, this is, when, you, when, you, when you're a pure devotee, you can see that. You know, just, yes, you know, here. <laughs> so nice, huh? So, we're fortunate to... Yeah, she was a daughter. Right. Did so much service. The mother, the daughter, the kids. Here's the mic. Krishna Dini's uh, son, um, I, I, I'm forgetting his name right now, but he just got, he also is taken to Krishna consciousness and he just got uh, initiated. 
some time ago by my His Holiness Garrett song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah it's you nice. I remember you mentioned that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little, it's just a little comment, but it's, a, it's kind of off topic. But um, it is uh, Vaishnav Prabhu, the one in the kitchen. It's his birthday today. So if all the devotees here in the temple room and whoever's watching online could bless Happy him. birthday, Vaishnava Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So everyone could bless him and, yeah, all that. Good wishes. And may you never take birth again. Sometimes when it's out of the norm of our own experience or our own conceptions of Krishna consciousness, we have a hard time appreciating bhakti in someone. You, you, you basically were saying that. To glorify Mother Krishna Nandini, she ended up marrying a Muslim. Oh, well, that's right. And had many children with him. But he's a Krishna conscious Muslim and Krishna conscious children. And, you know, Krishna consciousness, she said, the universal medicine. Yeah. Makes you a better Christian, a better Muslim, a better devotee. Amazing, huh? Everything. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you very much. See the bubble bud key? Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Oh, is there, a, is there anything there? Uh, Question? Or? There is Alex Prabhu and Madhushidan Prabhu with us. Okay, we can't hear you. Have to, uh, turn up the volume. Oh, there's a question? Uh, or uh, no questions. No questions. Also muted. The muted in the microphones. Okay. Jai. Well, Re a recall said, a very nice class with practical examples and heart-touching book distribution stories. <laughs> Haribo. Thank you. Hare Krishna.